Hi, Ben here from Trident Fly Fishing, and today we're going to talk about how to choose the right fly reel every single time. While choosing a fly reel is a lot easier than choosing a fly rod, it can still be daunting and confusing if you're a beginning angler. And that's why we're making this video today. But if you're really, really new to the sport, you might be a little bit confused about some of the terminology. For those of you that fit into that category, we've got another video called Fly Reel Basics with a link in the description below that really goes over in great detail the absolute basics and essentials of everything we're gonna talk about today, from arbors to drags and more. So if you're confused, watch that video first. Now let's get on to how to choose the perfect fly reel. And we've got a lot of great beginner content coming out, so don't forget to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on any of those great videos. We're gonna talk about five factors that are gonna help you choose the perfect fly reel every single time. And factor number one is size. You're gonna to wanna to match the size of your reel to the size of your rod and the size of your fly line. And for us fly fishermen, that means matching your line weights. So if we take a look at this Ross Animus here, it's gonna say four slash five right on the box. And that's gonna to correspond to a four weight and a five weight line. And that's pretty standard as most reels will have two or even three line weights that they'll work for. Now, some other manufacturers don't make it quite as easy as Ross does to determine which size reel you need. This hatch, for example, is called a nine plus which you might think is for a nine weight reel, but in fact, this reel here is more of a 10, 11, maybe even a light 12 weight reel. So you're definitely gonna to wanna to check your specifications and make sure you've got the right line weights before you decide on which reel to buy. Now for most of the fly fishing that you're gonna be doing and for virtually all the freshwater fishing, that's all you're gonna really need to think about. Does your fly line fit on your reel? However, if you're getting into saltwater fly fishing, you're gonna to have to start thinking about backing capacity. And while we've got a great video that goes into a lot of detail on how much backing you really need for any given situation, link in the box below, a quick rule of thumb that's going to save you a lot of time is you're going to need about 150 yards for smaller saltwater species and anadromous species. That's going to be your bonefish, your redfish, your steelhead, things like that. And if you're a big game angler, you're probably not watching this video anyway, but suffice to say, you're gonna need a lot more backing than that. Now, the second factor you're gonna to wanna to consider as you're picking out your next reel is weight. And by that, I mean the physical weight of the reel. And this one's pretty easy. For any given size that you've already chosen, pick the lightest reel that you can afford. Lightweight reels create lightweight setups and they're just a lot more fun to fish with. Take this Hardy Ultra Click here. It's one of the lightest fly reels on the planet and it's gonna be perfect for dialing in those two and three weight setups. If you've been doing your research on fly reels, however, you might've come across something called balance. And while the forums love to go into lots and lots of detail on balance, I'm here to tell you, you really shouldn't worry about it. And while I've got another link in the box below that goes into great depth on why you shouldn't care about balance, just take my word for it. Buy the lightest reel you can. And that leads us to factor number three, which is drag. And when it comes to drag, you really have only one decision to make, and that is where you're going to be fishing. If you're fishing in freshwater or for other small types of game fish, drag is really not much of a consideration. Click Paul reels, like this Hardy, are gonna be fantastic for those applications, even though they have zero drag whatsoever. Of course, you might prefer a drag, but let's face it, you're not gonna be dialing it down to five or six pounds or whatever your reel goes to ever. On the other hand, if you're fishing in saltwater or for bigger game, you're gonna want a strong seal drag. The perfect example of that is this hatch iconic. If you turn this drag all the way down, it's gonna generate a lot of stopping power. You can barely turn this reel. And better still, this reel is gonna be well sealed. So it's gonna keep all of that salt water out of the inside of this drag. And that's gonna leave you with a reel that requires virtually no maintenance. But you might be asking yourself, how do you know if a drag is sealed? Well, the easiest way is to go look on the manufacturer's website. But let's face it, not all sealed drags are created equal. So if you want a drag that's really, really sealed, check the website 
and then make sure you've got a drag that kind of looks like this with no exposed parts. Because if there's nothing exposed, there's nothing to corrode and nothing to get water inside of that housing. Factor number four is arbor size. And if you haven't watched our Fly Reel Basics video yet, that's gonna be this ring right here. I like to think of it as the outer edge of the hole inside of a donut. And without going into too much math, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you've got the largest arbor that you can afford. And we want a large arbor because that's gonna increase our line pickup. And line pickup is gonna make a lot of difference for you on the water. Now, if you're a freshwater angler, you might be thinking, hey, I don't really care about that. But the truth of the matter is, even if you're not fighting really big fish, line pickup matters. And all you have to do to test that hypothesis is go out, make a few casts with your old Fluger Metalist, then reel your line back up. Then do the same thing on a large arbor reel. It's so much faster and saves you so much time on the water. If you are fishing for big game, however, that large arbor and that fast line pickup is just gonna give you a huge advantage during that fight. And last but not least, our factor number five is actually three mini factors. It's look, feel, and ergonomics. You're gonna wanna buy a reel that you're happy with, that looks great, and that you're comfortable fishing with. For freshwater fishing, that's all that really matters. For saltwater fishing, however, I like to have a reel that's got a nice large handle, one that's really easy to grip, and a drag knob that's easy to grip. Because if I have to tighten that drag in the middle of fighting a large fish, I don't wanna be fumbling around with it. And there you have it. Now you know how to choose the right fly reel every single time. Now, we haven't gone into spay reels because we've got another video on that, but it's also a little bit more of an advanced topic. If you still have questions, you can give us a call at Trident at 888-413-5211 or email us 24-7 at support at tridentflyfishing.com and we'll help you dial in the perfect reel for you. Don't forget to leave a comment in the box below and tell us what your favorite fly reel is. I'm Ben. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.